Now I've shown you that the complex numbers are actually all located on a circle. But how do we put this into a notation? What I'm going to do now is derive Euler's notation. And that is something you will not find anywhere else, at least anywhere that I know of. Because people just usually accept it. There's no understanding behind it. I was not told the understanding. Probably you will not be told it. So look, you have to understand the e, the exponential function. Now, you have to know calculus to get it. So I'll just assume for a second that you know calculus. If you don't, you will not be, get, not be getting lost. But definitely come back when you know calculus. The e function, exponential, is the function that has the same derivative as its value. No matter how big or small the value is, that's how big the derivative is. That is the change of the value, the rate of change of the value. Now, if it's a real exponential, it looks like this. And that is the more the function goes, the faster it goes up. And this, the speed at which it goes up will be exactly the same as how much it has gone uh, before. But for us, we have the square root of minus 1, which we bring into play now. That is the operator of 90 degree rotation. So if we rotate the derivative compared to the actual position by 90 degrees, you'll get something very interesting. Let's say that this is how much we've gone so far from my elbow to my fingers. And let us say that the derivative is not in the same direction, but actually 90 degrees from it. What you'll find is that it's going to curl around. Because, because the type of motion that has the acceleration exactly 90 degrees to the speed is circular motion. Anything that has acceleration 90 degrees to speed will go around in an exact circle. And that's what we're looking for. E to the i, to the power of i, is actually describing in this subtle way a circle. It says circle. Moreover, as no length is given, that is no number before it, it's one times e to the i, that's a unit cycle. That's how we say unit cycle. And there's a final ingredient, the degree e to the i theta, where theta is in radians, and e to the i, something radians, that describes exactly a position on the unit cycle. If you don't want it to be the unit cycle, what you simply do is multiply it, a times e to the i theta. Here is a recap of the derivation step by step. First, the square root of minus 1 rotates by 90 degrees. It's a rotation, it's not really a number, even though it is also a number. But it's most well represented as a rotation. The exponential function is connected to the derivative, and these two things together are able to create a mathematical description of a circle. It could be any circle. This could be called the definition of the circle. But because there is no length specified, no radius specified, 
we call this unit circle. We just assume number one because we don't have to write it out. So far so good. In order to specify one position on that circle, you have to give an angle. Here is an example of how you do this. Pi over 2. You know that's radians and that's the equivalent of 90 degrees. And I said minus i pi over 2. Well, minus means it goes down, it goes clockwise. So minus 90 degrees, that's my 90 degrees in the negative direction. You can scale this thing and that's the big letter A in front. It could be R. Probably it was better if it was called R, but A is just a, a usual notation here. And finally, if for some reason the angle is not constant, but it's moving, you introduce a variable. That's the E to the I omega T.